Yes, it's my great pleasure to welcome members of the Bay Area Urban Debate League. I was invited to um, observe one of their semifinal uh, tournaments at Mission High School and was just so impressed and amazed at how articulate uh, our students were. And uh, also had an opportunity to engage in a policy discussion with two of their students. Um, we were at a law firm. It was a very intimidating environment for uh, kids, but they really held their own. And I really wanted to have them come to the board and be able to show off some of their stuff. So would like to welcome the Bay Area Urban Debate League. Hey, um, I want to thank everybody um, on the board for all you do for San Francisco youth and particularly for giving us a little bit of time to tell you about how this program works. Uh, my name is Dimitri Seals and I'm the executive director of the Bay Area Urban Debate League. I was a debate coach back in the day for four years in Washington, D.C. and saw some amazing transformations in the young people that I worked with, particularly who uh, were at the school that I taught at because they had been kicked out of other pro uh, programs and traditional models of education had not worked for them. I think a lot of times in our society, it's easy to give up uh, on students when they reach the high school level and they are not engaged yet in the educational process. But debate is one of those ways to channel student voice and to channel everybody's love of expressing themselves uh, in a way that gets them to achieve tremendous results, the kind of results that uh, can Board member Marasa was talking about, uh, not only in terms of ex uh, self-expression, but also in terms of academic research at very high levels, and being able to do the kind of research that allows them to participate in policy conversations at high levels. Let me tell you, there's a reason why we get the kind of test scores that we do for the students that we serve. And we serve students uh, who are not traditionally succeeding. Um, so I want, to, I want to thank you again. It is a humbling experience to see where we are nowadays uh, coming into our fourth year of the program. We were very small. It was just an idea in a few people's heads. And now we are at 12 schools in the Bay, four of them in San Francisco, and looking to expand to a fifth in next year. Uh, I want to give a shout out to some of the champions in San Francisco Unified, not only some of the members of, of this board here, but also some people in academics and professional development, Helen Pettiford and Bill Sanderson, and uh, in Excel, uh, Lucy Hong and Yashika Crawford have also been amazing. Uh, I, the last thing I'm going to say is that we're not just an after school program. Uh, we want to and we are already uh, significantly expanding into the school day itself. And finding that, um, so we have an A to G approved course, and we have a grant from two foundations to do curriculum work over the summer to kind of extend this debate pedagogy, which, uh, which does energize young people who are not motivated in traditional classrooms, um, to as many young people as we can. So we ask your support as we uh, try to deepen our impact for more students. Thank you very much. Hello, esteemed members of the board. Nice to be standing before you again. My name is Eric Wilcox, and I'm an English teacher and debate coach at Balboa High School. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the experience I've had the last year running what uh, basically a pilot program, a seventh period uh, way for students to participate in policy debate and to make up English credits. So we thought this was a structural intervention of sorts that could target kids who are not being served by the present system and show them a little something different for the seventh period class. I'll be dwelling on the successes of our program, and my uh, esteemed colleague, Hugo Vargas, who co-teaches with me, will be focusing on some of the challenges and some of the things that we, we could use in terms of support. Um, so we have about eight kids in these um, after-school classes. They've been uh, a semester each, so they get one um, make-up course, uh, one semester credit in English, right? During this time, uh, again, eight to ten people are coming. We had maybe 15 on the roster of some of the most at-risk students at Balboa High School, and we've been able to retain eight to ten of them each of the last two semesters uh, with no real leverage, actually. Um, it, it's the activity that speaks for itself, and it's, again, showing them a little different face of education and one that is more prone to uh, listen to what they have to say. Uh, we've personally seen profound changes in self-image. A lot of these kids, in the best-case scenarios, uh, see themselves as intellectuals and see themselves as debaters. There's been a transformation of, of the way they see themselves in terms of in the context of the larger school. Uh, the two-person team nature of policy debate keeps them accountable. Uh, and so kids that might otherwise flake have been held accountable by their partner. And this is, again, the structural uh, debate, that's the nature of debate that, that um, brings these advantages. 
Um, also, Hugo and I are very proud of the curriculum that we've developed, which is looking very closely at this specific policy debate case, but it's also trying to give them a broad overview of debate strategy, debate theory, argumentation, and all that stuff. We like to think that this might be a model that would be exportable to other schools, possibly, if we wanted to explore the possibilities of a debate-related debate way to make up English credits as summer school dries up, as night school, uh, extremely challenging for, for many of our seniors. Um, so, and, and as always, we remain partisans of the vision of debate as a tool to transform the entire school. We've seen this happen at Balboa. Uh, debate has been there for about 10 years, and all of the 11th and 12th grade classes at Balboa uh, feature debate as part of a, uh, as a pedagogical tool, right? So this is another way that we can recruit folks um, into our league if they experience some success in their classrooms. And so that really debate has become a culture at Balboa to a great extent. However, we would really like to push that and institution institutionalize it more um, into the day, into the regular school day at Balboa. So thank you very much for listening to me, and I would like to uh, introduce my colleague, Hugo Vargas. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Um, my name is Hugo Vargas, and I am a for, I'm, I'm a former student of Balboa High School, and I'm currently co-teaching this de this uh, debate class. I was involved in debate on the first inception of the Bay Area Urban Debate League, um, and then went to college, and then came back. And um, I think I uh, I mean I, I I really believe in the transformative power of this activity, but. Um, so right now I'm going to focus my speech on sort of the uh, challenges that we've uh, run up against in uh, deploying this pilot program. Uh, as Eric has already mentioned, we have had our prof uh, pilot program up and running for uh, two semesters, and there have been uh, an average of 15 students enrolled in each semester. While the program has had several instances of success, um, we have run into a few structural issues that um, have severely limited us. Our first challenge is attendance. Um, out of the 15 students enrolled, there have have been an average of eight students that regularly um, show up to class. This has been one aspect that we have struggled the most with since uh, the uh, students we work with have already already have truancy problems and uh, the students that have not altogether attended have already dropped out of school um, and have or have in some other form given up um, in the educational system um, and that's a, an, an issue that uh, we have run up against every single one of the class uh, times that uh, we've had it. Um, the second issue is time. Um, although the students uh, that regularly participate in the program, as Eric has already mentioned, have clearly benefited from it, the amount of time that we get with them, uh, a total of just uh, three hours a week, is not enough, in my opinion, to make up the, for the ground loss over uh, the course of the years previous to their involvement in the pro program. Uh, we believe it would be in benefit to the students if they were given more time during the week in the program, um, especially if the class is truly to live up to its name of remedial. Uh, the third thing um, is uh, the fact that our class is only offered after school. And has, as Dimitri um, has already uh, mentioned and Eric uh, corroborated, um, we are in the process of developing curriculum to fully incorporate debate into, uh, in, in, into the day. Um, and, uh, and again, this is an issue of timing, but also it's an issue of accountability. Given um, the timing of the seventh period of time, we have found that uh, the students are already, for the most part, tired and hungry. Um, we've tried to ameliorate this by um, uh, offering snacks, but I mean you can only you can only uh, gain so much ground with that, and also this makes uh, it more of a challenge to get their attention for a long period of time, and uh, and and then it would be during regular school out hours. And uh, as far as accountability goes, um, our ability to assign homework and increase the intensity of the workload is severely limited out of our concern that the students will lose interest and uh, just end up stopping their attendance altogether. So if we were to schedule it into the regular um, the regular day and we, you know, have that kind of leverage where their grade is dependent on it. I mean, their grade is kind of dependent on it already, but um, it's uh, it's an it's a no mark. You know, the alternative is a no mark. Like with uh, the full incorporation of debate into the classroom, we would have uh, that the, the the leverage that grading gives you. Um, and the fourth and last uh, issue um, is along the lines of special needs students um, and uh, English learner students. This was kind of an unexpected thing that we ran up against, but um, we had a, uh, one English learner student um, that was that was involved um, in the activity. Um, he ended up dropping out of the activity. Um, 
for I think it's not it for other reasons than um, the quality of the program, but I think that it opened up the possibility of this um, of debate becoming a tool uh, for uh, for 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 English learners, um, especially because it puts them on the spot of uh, public speaking and uh, in, in, it increases their uh, reading ability greatly because they they do reading competitively. Um, uh, so, as it is clear from this list of things, while the program has shown great potential for success, and this can be testified by the, the, the administrative staff at, our, uh, at Balboa, the program uh, needs, a, need, needs a lot of work and a lot more resources in the future, and we have already discussed several strategies to address the above issues with the help of uh, the League and the school administrative staff and uh, hopefully some board members, um, that all center around uh, the full incorporation of our program into the regular schedule at Balboa and to begin our intervention at an earlier stage in the student's career, um, hopefully their freshman year. Um, and that, that, that was a long list of things, but thank you very much for your attention, um, and I really appreciate your help, and uh, I look forward to working with you guys in the future. Uh, hello, I'm Melvin. I go to downtown high school. I'm 17 years old. I'm a senior. Um, I'm on the debate team at downtown high school, and ever since I joined the debate team, um, I've, I've been having a lot of fun. Debate is a great program. I've got a bunch of my friends who join it. We all enjoy it. Um, and ever, ever since I joined debate, I noticed that my reading skills and my public speaking has become way better. Like, I'm able to speak in front of you guys right now. And... <laughs> And um, reading in class, you know, before I'd be a little shy and hesitant, you know, scared to read in class. But now, you know, I'm reading in class. I'm able to go to other classes and uh, talk about programs that our school is introducing and things. And uh, debate has also gave me a bunch of opportunities of going to UC Berkeley and debating, which was a great experience for me, earning second place, boost my confidence up. That was a great experience. Thank you. Um, yeah, debate is great. And before uh, debate, you know, I didn't really think about college too much. But now since I've been doing debate, I want to take it to the next level, go try to do it at college. And uh, debate just helped me a lot, and I love debate. So thanks for uh, listening to me. It's, a, it's an honor talking in front of all you guys. Thank you. My name is Nico DeCumos. I'm the co-coach at Downtown High School uh, with the debate team and also a special education teacher. And um, I was a debater in high school, and it gave me access to experiences and higher learning that I never would have had if I hadn't done debate. And it gave me um, a concern for the world that I never would have had had I not done debate. And I think that that is one of the things that is really valuable for students. Um, you know, you can tell students they should care about political theory or philosophies or politics, but um, one thing that debate does is it puts them in this competitive situation where then I have students coming to me and saying, please explain to me all these political theories so I can win the debate round, right? Which is amazing because, you know, maybe, you know, especially at downtown high school, students haven't been at all um, they didn't care, right, about all these different ideas. Um, and you really can't make students want to be um, invested in education. They have to choose to do it themselves. And I think that that's a lot of the problem in schools today, that students don't see the value of education. They don't see the value of higher learning. And this is one of the ways to get students to care about those things, um, which then is what is going to affect the achievement gap and affect testing when students, um, you know, care for themselves about the world and these ideas and knowing about academic language. Um, so for all those reasons, um, you know, I really encourage the board to continue to support the Bay Area Urban Debate League. Um, I think that debate should be done at every school. I think it's that valuable and I think it has that much potential to affect students. So thank you for your time. Uh, 
Uh, good evening, board members. My name is Glenn Botha from June Jordan High School. Um, I'm a co-teacher of debate as well. Uh, the debate started two years ago, and um, the other teacher is not able to come tonight. But from the beginning, we've integrated it at June Jordan as a class. It started out as an elective um, with seniors and is now still an elective at June Jordan and in addition to after school. And I just want to share some of my experiences. I'm the science teacher there, but um, I actually showed up to some of the debates the first year in the 2010-2011 uh, year. And I was just amazed. You know, it's, it was in Fremont at the time. Um, students came at 7.30 in the morning on a Saturday. And you go all day till around sometimes 6.30, 7 o'clock. Um, and many of the students were one, the same ones that struggled to come to school um, on time sometimes. And when I saw them there debating, I, it actually changed my um, opinion and attitude towards a lot of those students there in my class, seeing what they were capable of. And it just kind of opened my um, eyes up to seeing um, when students have a voice and are willing to share that voice and feel like someone's there um, to listen and it's worthwhile to say, um, they have so many amazing things to share. Um, I've seen this year also with some of my advisees, um, debate kind of has attracted students that do want to talk a lot and also some students that don't actually talk a lot but have a couple things that they want to share. And I have an advisee this year who ended up winning the first speaker award, won debate, and has been speaking a lot more. And so I've kind of just seen the transformation in some students um, that they're able to make. And so uh, my last thing I just want to leave is that debate, I feel, gives the students an authentic arena. Um, and what I mean by authentic is a place where it's not just you know, your grade or the teacher's approval, but they're proud of what they've done because um, they're with their peers and they're getting a chance to really have their voice heard. And um, students, as Nico said there, don't often see that in education and it has provided a forum for them. And I urge you um, to support it and continue and I'd love to see more San Francisco schools participate. Thank you. Good evening. Okay. Uh, my name is James Pierce. I'm a special education teacher at Ida B. Wells High School. I'm a San Francisco native. I've been educated in San Francisco, Paul Revere, Aptus, Lincoln, State, and USF. So I, I, I feel we have... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, what I've seen just, and I, I'm uh, just a recent coach, as of January I started with uh, the Barrier Urban Debate League, but what I've seen just in the last month, and especially in the last three weeks, of my students asking me if I'm going to be on time <laughs> for debate practice on Wednesday, <laughs> all, to the point of harassment, <laughs> enthusiasm, eagerness, we often, or we don't often enough have the opportunity to get hook students in and get them excited about something academic. This is an opportunity that we have at Ida B. Wells. At Ida B. Wells as downtown, we're in the trenches. We are in the business of giving students an opportunity to get their high school diploma. If we don't, we fail as teachers, we fail to our students, and if we don't take advantage of opportunities like Bay Area Urban, the Bay Urban, Urban League debate, it's just one one or two students or four students or eight students that might have found another opportunity to come to school. That's what we need in, in, in the ground level, getting kids in class, in school, excited about academics, excited about learning and getting their confidence up. So uh, I want, uh, hopefully we can continue this and spread it out, hopefully during the day and not just after school, at least at Ida B. Wells and other schools. It would be a great opportunity and uh, we hope that you guys support us. Thank you. Good evening, good evening, everyone. How are you? My name is Robin Bonner, and I'm a um, co-coach at Ida B. Wells and a student mentor at um, Downtown High School, as well as a former debater of the bottle. Um, debate came into my life while I was at Downtown High School getting everything together for my high school diploma, so I, I really owe that activity a lot because it's given me a lot of strength and courage and um, great speaking skills in order to navigate the many environments that I do. And, I owe all of that to debate in the bottled. Um, also, I would like to touch upon the fact that when students encounter debate, they encounter something different 
in education that they aren't getting in regular school because it allows them to go outside of the box and to examine what is really going on in in society. And also they get to see someone such as myself and Mr. Pierce and Nico and all the other coaches, you know, teach them an activity that allows for them to be that, that smart aleck that they, you know, can't be in the classroom to, to keep that professional. <laughs> um, which which is really beautiful. And also, they get to talk about things that they're not talking about at home, that they see on the news, but they're not really, they're interested in, but they don't get to examine it. And with debate, they get to examine it. And I think that's what's beautiful about the activity, because I have students telling me, I've never took this many notes before in a 45 minute activity with Mr. Pierce. And that was beautiful to see that they got on the board and they started taking notes and they took more notes within this activity than what they took all day, which was something that, you know, as a former dropout, I don't like taking notes. So <laughs> it was it was beautiful to see. And lastly, before I wrap this up, so y'all can go on with y'all, y'all agenda. <laughs> Um, please support debate in SFUSD. I think it's one of the many outlets that students get to shine and pursue their education in a different outlet. Um, just like Melvin pointed on earlier, he went to UC Berkeley from downtown high school and he got to debate and be on that campus that he wasn't doing at his former school. So that tells you a lot about the activity that you can be any student of any eth- ethnic background, demographic or educational, you know, advantages or disadvantages in joining this activity and be successful. And if that's not an investment, I don't know what is. Thank you so much. Um, commissioners, comments? Commissioner Wins? Thank you. I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. and It's very exciting. But I have a question, which hopefully you'll be, it's partly response to some of the questions you raised. Um, This is a question about kind of the common core, about our curriculum work, and about um, what we give what credits for. So it used to be that there were a lot more English classes, courses, for which kids got their English credits so that they didn't. I mean, we, I wish, and I have hope someday that we actually will have the resources so that kids can have a longer instructional day that they'd have a seventh period, for instance. But, um, you know, in the light of the sort of drive towards standardizing all instruction, um, I'd be interested in what our our curriculum staff that's working on the Common Core Standards and other, what they, how, what their discussion is about that. We've had this, it's not only in English, but it's kind of the most obvious place where uh, we, well, we've had the discussion about um, ethnic literature and ethnic studies many times and about um, the, you know, what kids have t- We've gotten to the point where with the A to G requirements, they pretty much have to take a prescribed program. And there isn't time to take much else. And if there are only the standard courses that qualify, it's not just the A to G requirements, but rather if we are standardizing our instruction so everybody's only taking the same classes. Um, so I would hope that maybe the curriculum committee could take that up and we could uh, be able to explore this idea about, um, I mean, I, I, I won't say, gee, we'll support this when we have no money to support anything, well. but I, I just think for us we ought to know the different kinds of activities in which kids are engaging, how they meet the standards, and whether we can uh, explore these possibilities. And thanks for all the work that you do. Commissioner Fuhrer. Um, thank you, President Yee. I believe that Mr. Sanderson has done a lot of work on this to get this course actually um, A through G as a G elective. Is that correct, Mr. Sanderson? Good evening, Commissioners. Bill Sanders, the Executive Director in Academics and Professional Development. That is correct. We did get the course, I think Dimitri also references, 
we have been able to get the course as a G elective this year. Um, and in addition, and we're more than happy to come back, we have had, we have monthly meetings with Dimitri and Helen Pettiford, or I do, and one of the things that we have very much started talking about is how do we integrate the, this into the curriculum because it is an important skill set that every student have, not just students who are able to take the G elective debate course. And so it is a conversation that we're starting to have. And actually, that is, that is some of the funding that for the professional development that um, Bottle has been able to secure um, for this summer for teachers. That is a part of the grant funding that he has done. Just for a second. Oh, I, thank you. I appreciate that. And that's sort of the first step is being a G elective. But the real question is, is it possible, I'm not necessarily saying in this case, but is it possible for there to be a, a you know, integrated debate with other things that is not an elective but actually meets the, the English requirements, that's the question, not just about this, and maybe it's not possible in this case, but some of the other things that kids used to have time to take that now they don't. The graduation requirement policy that is passed by you allows for up to four college prep English classes. So if they are approved as a B, then they can qualify. Of course, our recommended sequence that we have as a district is ninth grade English, 10th grade English, um, 11th and 12th grade English. But if it qualifies as one of a B, as long as there are four um, contiguous years, then we're, we're fine with that as a graduation requirement. So that's my point. Are we exploring those kinds of things so that we can, that's really. And the one thing I would add is the, the Common Core State Standards for English Language Arts that we've been looking at in the Core Curriculum Committee and come back call fully. They describe a set of performance standards for students, what students will know and be able to do in listening, speaking, reading, writing, and reasoning. So the role of debate in core classes, core English classes, ought to be magnified and expanded. So we should see elective courses, after school courses, and this type of instructional strategy in regular core courses. Um, thank you. And thank you, Bay Area Urban Debate. I think that everybody on the board knows that my daughter participated in Bay Area Urban Debate when she was in high school. This was a student who had an IEP in speech for um, most of her elementary school years. She debated in high school. She was a student who had a lot to say and, quite frankly, still has a lot to say. <laughs> and um, debate really taught her the art of argument. She lived and breathed debate and actually even ate debate after she became a vegetarian. Um, after the issue was, I think she was investigating or debating was animal rights, and she was a vegetarian for six years after that. Um, so I am a great supporter, of course, of Bay Area Urban Debate, because this is something actually that a lot of urban kids don't get, and urban kids in public schools do not get. And this type of instruction, this type of um, developing a passion for life and passion for our society and about what is going on in the world and digging deeper and being able to investigate, but working on as a team also in it. And I think that I also really appreciate the team spirit when there are teams going out for the debate. I was the carpool mom for many of those debates that went on and on and on until late at night. And um, I have seen also the power of debate. I have seen members on her team, quiet, shy, turn into really robust speakers, speaking their mind, being very articulate. My daughter eventually graduated and went to Berkeley. She's a labor organizer now, and believe me, um, she still has really a lot to say, and she has perfected the art of argument, and it is hard to win any argument with her. So I think that we are also, I also applaud um, Commissioner Wins for bringing forth the question about how can we incorporate this. When I was a high school student in San Francisco Unified Schools, just in the San Francisco Unified School District, I taught 
um, took classes such as expository writing, I took creative writing. Those were things that actually met the English requirement for graduation. I hope that debate will become part of that core and not just an elective, but I think that if we can use also our Excel funds to complement the after school activity while they have a core subject during the day and use the Excel funds to support what is happening in the classroom, this is a great place I think for our funds to be used and to support actually um, our students who are taking debate. And thank you to all the teachers who came out. And I, I just want to mention also that Robin Bonner is also on the San Francisco Youth Commission right now. So there you go. Um, thanks a lot. Commissioner Mendoza. Great. I just want to thank you also. I've had the privilege of watching you debate. Um, and I really think that the, the um, exercise you allow our students to go through in terms of really understanding what the issues are, standing your ground and, and having not just an argument for the sake of argument, but really um, talking about what how this affects you um, professionally and personally and, and having this open dialogue around that. You know, it's the way we want to raise our own kids. It's the way that we love to see our kids in Unify um, have conversations. And so, you know, extremely supportive of the work that you're doing. And I just want to thank you um, for continuing to do that with our, with our kids. Um, you know, I was a forensic uh, kid when I was in high school, and, and we didn't really have anybody kind of counteracting what we were saying. Uh, so it was a very different approach. And um, so my son, who too is a great debater, um, and will continue to challenge me on many levels. I am sure um, I wish he would kind of thought about it from a forensic perspective instead of a debating perspective, but it's a great exercise, and I really hope that all of our kids get the opportunity to participate in the great work you're doing in our district, so thank you. Commissioner Morasi? Uh, I just wanted to um, ask the Bay Area Urban Debate League to please invite uh, members of the board to serve as judges, to help in any capacity, and to invite members of the community who are interested in learning more to attend the tournaments and play a part as judges, because I know it's tough to recruit judges. Mr. Moffis. So let me just also congratulate you. It's tough to do it after school, but you managed to do it, and, and I, I get the challenges that you've spoken about, but those students that come, they come and I'm grateful to hear that they do. And I'm also really happy to hear about the, the programs that are in the school day. That's also very, very um, helpful to know that you exist in that way. Um, I, I just can't begin to express my admiration for you, Elvin, uh, for even coming forward to speak to us. Yes, I was very impressed, and I continue to be impressed by young people who have managed to come out of their shell in this setting. I was. Um, one of those students that is painfully shy. So I can certainly and hopefully look back um, at my life and here I sit today. Still, which people, many people don't know, painfully shy in lots of circumstances and, and um, managed to speak when called upon. And there really is nothing like taking a topic um, and debating it, especially when you believe in the other side but that's not the side that you pulled out of the hat um, and how difficult it is to be able to argue that other side when you've never believed it before. So it, it is something to behold when a student is presented with that challenge. And, and to hear that you've, you've been doing it well is also wonderful and that speaks to your coaches and instructors. So congratulations and kudos to the instructors for keeping the momentum going and then getting yourself um, here before us. That's, all, that's also an effort, <laughs> and, and I uh, applaud you for that. So congratulations on the success you've had thus far, and I look forward to the discussion. Uh, looks like it will happen at the Curriculum Committee and how we can work with you all more in SFUSD. So congratulations. So I just want to also thank the teachers and uh, Robert, the, the student. Elvin. 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 Melvin, okay for coming out. See, I needed some debate classes. <laughs> you know, and, and I actually, I'm not kidding about this. If I had taken a debate class um, somewhere along the line, I probably would do a lot better with uh, arguing with uh, my colleagues <laughs> on the school board. <laughs> we like you the way you are. Um, but I want to thank you for coming out, and um, I'd be more than happy, as uh, Commissioner Morassi was saying, if you're 
if you're short of judges and you need some of us to come, I, I'm more than happy to come. Uh, thank you very much.